Okay, hello again everybody. Uh, this video is one I'm very excited to make because I think it's very cool. Uh, your mileage may vary. And that is, uh, you, you hopefully you've seen the previous video I made on the basic operation of this Harris RF 1140A uh, transmitter. And now I wanted to show you this remote control. I have wanted one of these 7405 remote controls for 15 years, I would say, maybe maybe longer. Uh, I just I love remote controlling radios. I don't know why. I just do. Don't ask me why. Uh, and I finally picked one up uh, along with this transmitter. And as I mentioned in, in my previous email, I'm sorry, previous video, the idea is to create uh, an operating position here on my operating desk um, along with the Harris RF590 receiver and to make a transceiver out of it, it'll go into this empty space here and allow me to operate the transmitter and receiver together. Uh, receiver, clearly you want to be local to you if you can do it for use of the uh, VFO knob. Uh, and then once you find a frequency that you want to work, you key it into the remote, which will then key it up on the transmitter. So let's take a look at, at how all this works. <clears throat> so in the previous uh, video, uh, you saw me operating this in the normal mode, even though I accidentally called it programming mode. And uh, we're gonna, we can put into remote mode is what we want. So let's go into remote mode. Now in remote mode, uh, nothing, there is no local functionality at all. Everything is pretty much locked out, nothing happens. So now let's turn on the 7405 remote. Now what you'll notice right off the bat is a very different kind of display here. Almost like the old style uh, rear projection type uh, displays they used to have uh, be be before technology got more sophisticated. But it is interesting. I mean, they, I guess, uh, I mean, I, I would have probably, if I was designing, chosen to use some kind of LCD in, in here and then you could put whatever information you want. But anyway, it, it's kind of nostalgic in the way that they've done it. So what you'll notice is um, once I turned it on, it's already reflecting all the parameters, all the details of the actual uh, exciter itself. Uh, and it's giving you status here of the power amplifier being off. So let's walk through this a little bit. You'll see, because, because these can control receivers and exciters, receivers and transmitters, you need to be able to have the functions of both present in this unit. So for example, you've got a, you've got a uh, um, RF gain function, a speaker audio, you can select off, lower, or upper sideband. This is for receiving. There's a local squelch function. Uh, and then there's an audio gain. None of these things uh, we're going to be using. By the way, uh, whatever you see on the uh, VFD display is, is not real. It's just uh, aliasing from the camera. We're not going to use any audio-related things uh, except for uh, you know, a microphone and, and, a, and a CW key because we're not uh, operating the receiver remotely. So here's what's what where things start getting interesting. So you know you you could, you could pick your your so here we we have AM. Here you pick your audio source. So what you'll notice when you press something, it goes sort of gray. I don't know if it's going to come out in the video. Uh, it really does not. The, the the camera's too sensitive. But as you pick it, it first is dimmed and then brightens up. Dim, bright. I don't think you're going to be able to see that. And dim means that you've commanded the the re requested the the change of parameter. And then when it gets bright, it's read it back from the exciter, acknowledging that the change has taken place. So what you'll see is, uh, for example, I'm going to change the auto. You'll see it occur also on the exciter here. So let's let's um, let's let's do that. Let's see. So uh, we're at audio auxiliary one, auxiliary two, and you see the top one uh, changes first, and then the second one because it's a serial link, it takes a little time. Uh, now. What you see here is, I, is the ID. So you can change the ID of a different radio. So let's go to ID2. I don't have an ID2 set up. And you'll see that it's waiting now to communicate with whatever device is set up as ID2. Uh, the devices are set up inside. There is a series of, I think it's dip switches, um, where you can set the parameters up. Uh, you could also see what the parameters you hold in remote mode. If you hold the enter key for a while, it'll display all the remote parameters. Let's wait, 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 wait. There it is. Whoops, I guess I gotta hold it. 
forgot about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Let's try that again. Let me go into normal. Let's go back into remote mode. I forget how this works. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. There it is. So it's saying that this unit is set up as remote unit number one, 9,600 bits per second. And uh, so as unit number one, uh, I'm not gonna be able to communicate it with it because here I've got number two. So let's, let's go back to item number one, zero, one, enter. And there it is, uh, communicating with, uh, with the radio. And so now you can do everything you would normally do. You can change the frequency or change the channel. Let's go to channel two. I don't know if you can see that. Channel one, uh, channel, channel, whoops. Channel oh, two. Oh, there we go. See, so it takes a little, just a little delay. Oh, three. There you go. Uh, and let's, let's do it so you can see all of this. Channel oh, one. Enter. Yeah, you, so the bottom one is commanded and then it's read back into the remote unit. O oh, two. There you go. Now let's operate. Uh, let's see how the rest of it operates. So we, we could also enable the clipping. You see that the clip goes on and off here, and you'll see the way it's indicated. Clipping here is with a uh, a little indicator as opposed to an LED. I don't know why they, some of these design decisions they made, but they're, they're not bad. You know, they're just interesting. So let's go uh, here instead of having uh, a separate standby and operate button. They've combined it, so you press it once for standby and twice for operate. So here we go. And watch the LEDs at the bottom. So this went over to standby, and I'll hit it again, and it'll go to operate. Um, there we go. Now you see it's blinking. Blinking here means it's commanded, but it's waiting for the readback to confirm that the command has uh, taken effect. So um, you see it's in operator mode. If I go to PA off, it's blinking until it gets the signal that it PA is actually off. We'll do it again. Standby. Okay, standby was quick. Operator is blinking and then once, yeah, now it knows standby has, has uh, worked properly. Uh, apparently my clip is on and it's in ready, it's in a ready mode to operate. Right, and then you have other features. For example, uh, you can, if if you if you're connected to a receiver, you can initiate uh, the channel scanning, and it even has a local. This is very interesting. It's got a local test, a little byte test, uh, which will first do locally, and then give you the option to do a remote initiate a remote byte test, and we'll do all that. So let's go into test mode. So it's going through a byte routine. Okay, RCU, remote control unit passed. Now it's saying, do you want to test unit 01? You can probably change which unit you want to test, but 01, of course, as we know, is the exciter. And let's just hit enter and say, yes, we're going to test 01. Okay, is that not working? Maybe I hit ID, enter. Hmm, maybe hit test again. There we go. Now it says, now testing unit 01. And you see now the exciter is going into a byte test. And there it is, test passed. And the remote is, is reporting test passed unit one. And this can happen, again, if you have up to 99. Okay, let's go back into normal mode. You can choose up to 99 different uh, devices to control. And you can run remote tests on all of them. Let's go back to one. All right, let's see. Uh, there was something else interesting I wanted to show. Oh yeah, what I can show is that uh, if for some reason there's a failure, let's do that. Let's turn this thing off. Uh, at some point, this should, there it is. It'll tell you bad link unit 01. And that happens also, by the way, if a, a, a failure of the cable. 
or anything. And once it's once it established communication with the exciter, anything that goes uh, wrong with that communication will indicate bad link. So let's, let's, uh, let's turn the exciter back on and that should clear. There, so everything is cleared. Same thing with the power amp. So if we turn off the power amp, uh, let's see, let's see what we get. So here it's reporting PA com fault because the communication to the power amp, which is serial by the way, uh, has failed. And this is telling you that, oh, the, give it a second to re-report that. It's telling you the, the module and the fault code of exact, so it's module 2A29, fault 07, unit one. So it's telling you that there's some issue here. And of course, this is telling you that there's actually an issue here. So let's turn the amp back on and uh, you'll see all these things will clear. Okay, so the X hider cleared and then soon and you still see the fault and there, now that, that is cleared as well. It's so all very resilient. Problems are, are uh, when corrected, are reflected really pretty much immediately. And then the last thing I'll show is, which I kind of already did uh, un unwittingly, is even when this is not in remote mode, even when it's in normal mode, while the exciter can't actually make any, you try to make a change, it tells you it's in local, that the unit one is in local mode, you can't make any changes here. So you can, you can change the channel or the frequency, you can't actually change anything. Oops, sorry about that, I, let's go back to, uh, sorry, zero one. You can change the ID. Um, it won't let you change anything. It's, it keeps telling you, hey, it's the, the, the remote unit is in local mode. Unit one is in local mode. But as soon as we change this now to remote, and I go to make a change, uh, you can see already, you know, it's, it's, now, uh, it's now ready to be ready to be changed. And everything makes uh, the same changes here. Again, um, you know, frequency will go to 15, 230 and you'll see the exciter. All right, well, um, the only other thing I will attempt to show you is how this connects up. Um, hope there's enough light. So on the back of the remote unit is a DB15. It uses several DB15s. Right now I only have the serial control. Uh, there's another one for, for key lines and audio. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it. There's, there's one more for key lines and I think maybe one more for Audi. Whoops. I think ultimately I'll need two or three of these. Uh, and I just adapted this D I got one of these DB 15s that has a, a little, uh, RJ 45, uh, connection on the back so I can use standard cat three or shielded cat three cables. And I just ran, uh, I just selected the pairs that I wanted to use for this application just kind of randomly. Uh, but, you know, the positive and negative of each pair, you want to be twisted together. So blue and blue-white would be one pair. You know, orange and orange-white might be another pair. But by doing that, it allows me to run these cables uh, anywhere in the shack very easily using a oh, standard off-the-shelf Cat5 cable. And so we plug that in. Oops. Okay. And then that goes, uh, in the previous video, here's the cable. It goes into this RS-422 uh, connector, which in turn uh, goes to the back of the exciter here, this blue line exciter. Yeah, I could have just plugged one right into the other, but this is sort of demonstrating how it would be. I, I would have this cable all the way to the operating position uh, and plugged into, the, into here. Um, this would be a long cable uh, in my operating position. And so that's kind of it. I, I've taken the top off for some adjustments. Uh, the, top will, the, the top will eventually go back on here. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Harris RF7405 and how to use it. And I'm very excited to get this all integrated into my station. Thanks a lot.